Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and once again, it has been a while since I've made one of these update videos. So as usual, we've got a ton of stuff to cover. In this video, I'm gonna talk about where we're at with the catamaran sailing system, the river kayak design. I wanna give you an update on the Greenland kayak that we designed last year. I wanna talk about some of the new kayak sizes that we've added to the lineup. And finally, I wanna share an incredibly cool new project, which is adding pedal power and electric motors to our skin on frame canoes. So this is gonna be a big update, but before we get into all that, I just wanna take a couple minutes to talk about what's been going on with my health lately. Keep in mind, this part is mostly for my friends and people who have been following me for a long time. So if you don't care about my backstory, feel free to skip ahead to where we talk about the kayaks and the canoes. All right, so for those of you who have been following me for quite a while, you probably know that I live with some pretty serious health challenges. But for those of you who haven't, the short version of that is that in my early 20s, my autonomic nervous system dysregulated to a point where I was about 50% disabled. And then I felt a little bit better in my late 20s and into my early 30s. And then just as things were starting to get better, they started to get worse and worse until I finally had to stop paddling and even stop working because I couldn't regulate my blood pressure or my heart rate or my body temperature. I had severe chest pain and I had such bad brain fog that I had difficulty completing sentences. So that was a pretty rough experience. And to be perfectly honest, things have not gotten a lot better since then, but I did manage to restart the business in an online format so I can continue to make a living, which is a lot better than going broke. So as far as what is specifically wrong with me, for decades, doctors told me that I just had some kind of anxiety disorder or some kind of psychosomatic problem, which to be frank, seemed like complete bullshit to me. So I just kept learning about medicine and looking for answers and Finally, last year, I started narrowing in on a few different diagnoses. I was fortunate enough to work with one of the best geneticists in the world who found that I have a mitochondrial issue, which means that my body can't make energy correctly. And also I have a mild connective tissue disorder, which explains why I've always been really easy to injure and really slow to heal. So on top of all that, I've been working with another doctor to diagnose a problem with my immune system, where my immune system is basically attacking my body every time I exercise, which looks like it might actually be treatable. And on top of that, there's this crazy new symptom that I developed last year. Basically what started happening is that every time I would try to paddle a kayak, a few hours later, my blood pressure would start to climb to super dangerous levels, which is pretty terrifying considering that I have multiple family members who have died young from brain aneurysms. So yeah, definitely not a good situation and also kind of a huge problem because I can't release boat designs if I can't paddle to test them. So as usual, regular doctors weren't really any help and I just had to keep learning about things on my own and reaching out to different people until finally I was able to put together a team of physical therapists and other practitioners <laughs> And what we think is going on is that I've been living for decades with an undiagnosed spinal injury and somehow the twisting and shearing motion in my thoracic spine is aggravating that and triggering those rises in blood pressure. So even though this isn't a particularly fun thing to be going through right now, it is a huge step forward because there's a chance that if we can diagnose what's going on, we might be able to treat it and who knows, maybe one of these days I can get back on the water. So. Bringing things up to the current moment, right now I'm just trying different drugs to quiet down my immune system, I'm doing a bunch of physical therapy, and I'm getting a bunch of spinal imaging, and then from there we're just gonna have to see what happens next. Hopefully I can start recovering soon because it would be really nice to be able to paddle again, and it would make it a lot easier to do my job. All right, so moving on to actual boat-related topics, Picking up where we left off last year, if you follow my work, you know that for a while now I've been working on a really simple pop-up sail design for my kayaks and a system that allows two solo kayaks to be quickly catamaraned side by side. So last year I tested both of those things together on the flat deck version of my modern kayaks, which worked out great, but does come at the cost of significant compromises in comfort and gear storage. So this year's goal is to see if we can make the catamaran sailing concept work with our ridged deck kayaks, which are a lot more comfortable and easier to pack. So far, the testing is going kind of slow because I have to be careful with my body and we also need exactly the right conditions for each stage of the testing process. And then there's also a couple technical issues that I still need to work out. But 
Hopefully, if I can get enough testing days in and everything goes well, I will actually be able to release our small boat pop-up sailing system as a separate mini course this year. And the catamaran instructions are already included in our kayak and canoe building courses, which means that if you're interested in this functionality, you could start working on a boat now and add the sailing part later. All right, so next up, I wanna to touch briefly on the river kayak design, which has been on hold for a couple years because of my spinal issues. Basically, the river kayak is a 14 foot long whitewater touring kayak that is specifically designed for long self-support trips on high volume class one to three rivers. I still feel like I've got about one more prototype before this kayak is ready, but I did get a chance to take it out for one very careful run last summer, and I have to say that I was really happy with the performance. It's fast, it's maneuverable, and it surfs shockingly well for a 14 foot long kayak. I didn't really get enough footage to make a YouTube video, but I did put up two 90 second videos on my Instagram channel, so if you go to Cape Falcon builds on Instagram, you can see a little bit of footage of this kayak running whitewater and how it's performing. As of right now, my tentative plan is to build another prototype next spring, and then hopefully by then I'll be able to paddle enough to actually test it and we can get this design out for people who wanna build it. If you wanna learn more about this project, I did make a video about it a few years back, and I'll throw up a link on the screen for that right now. Okay, so next up, I just wanna fill you guys in on what's been happening with the Greenland kayak that I designed last year. In case you missed that project, basically I decided to take a brand new approach to Greenland kayak design, where instead of building exact copies of museum kayaks, I decided to take elements from different museum kayaks from the same time period and use those as a design palette to try to improve the performance without going outside of the parameters of what was done historically, which is really important to me when I'm working on traditional boats. I also took a new approach to my design process where I would build a prototype, wrap it in shrink wrap, and then test it, and then take it apart again, rebuild it slightly differently, and then shrink wrap it again. And I did this about 20 times before I finalized the design. And what I ended up with at the end was performance that I didn't even think was possible in a traditional kayak. Additionally, I also came up with a new sizing system with 11 different sizes for paddlers of different weights because when it comes to low volume kayaks, perfect sizing is absolutely critical for performance and especially for comfort. Now, I did make a full design video about this last year and I'll throw up a link on the screen for that right now. But the reason that I'm circling back to it here is because sometimes I don't feel like I fully communicate just how much I like a new design. And also I never trust my own opinions on things until I can get a bunch of other people on the water to see if they feel the same way. So coming up on a year now, I've had some pretty experienced paddlers test this design and the feedback is extremely positive. The kayak is fast, it's maneuverable, it rolls great, it weathercocks very little, and it runs down waves surprisingly well for a center balanced traditional Greenland kayak. So this is just a quick reminder that if you're interested in traditional Greenland paddling, think about checking out that design. I think we made something really good there. Okay, so next up here, just really briefly, I also wanna let you guys know that I've changed the sizing system for my two modern kayaks, the F1 and the LPB. The smaller sizes of the F1 still have the same sizing system they always have, but the larger sizes of the F1 and all the sizes of the LPB are now using a totally different type of scaling system, which I think produces better results, especially for larger paddlers. So I actually need to make a whole separate video about this, but for now, I just wanted to mention that in case you're a bigger person and you've been thinking about building one of my designs, all the new sizing information is fully incorporated into our plans and our video courses. And if there's a size that we don't have, feel free to reach out because with the new system, I should be able to go even farther than my existing sizes. Now, speaking of sizing, another thing I wanna to touch on briefly is that I am now fully confident in the ability of our canoe building system to make a good tandem canoe. Now, to be clear, we've been making tandems for years, but in the evolution from pack canoe to solo canoe to tandem canoe, I always like to be conservative with my recommendations until I see a lot of examples on the water and how people are liking them. And this year, we're really starting to see a lot of tandems being built using our system. And so far, people are pretty happy with them. There's not a ton of these on the Student Builds blog right now, but I know that a couple of my builders are working on blogs, so hopefully those will come out soon. 
but I have been posting them on Instagram. So if you want to see some really nice, newly completed tandem canoes, that's a great place to check that out. And if you decide you want to build, don't hesitate to reach out to me for a sizing recommendation. All right, so I think that brings us to the very last and also the biggest announcement that I have for you today, which is the new pedal drive system that I've been working on for our canoes. So just to give you a little background on how all this got started, this spring I got an email from a veteran with a back injury who was looking for a way to get back on the water with his friends, and he was curious about adding a pedal drive to one of my boats. This wasn't something I had seriously considered before just because of the weight and the complexity of that kind of project. But considering my own spinal situation right now, I thought maybe it was a good time to try to make this happen. So without going into a lot of details, this has turned out to be a much more complicated project than I anticipated, but I just finished my first working prototype, this boat right next to me, and it actually works really well. So the canoe that I'm sitting next to here is actually on the small end of the spectrum at 28 inches wide and a little bit under 15 feet long. But that was a deliberate choice because I always like to prototype from the worst case scenario. Basically, this is the smallest and least stable kayak that I would put this type of drive in. This does work, but generally speaking, I think people are gonna wanna build these a little bit wider, which is easy because our canoe system will let you build any size you want. So the core of this setup is a Hobie Mirage drive, which can be purchased separately. And this thing is just an absolutely genius little machine. Basically, your feet push the pedals back and forth, and that drives flippers underneath that flip like the tail of a fish, which is not only more efficient than a propeller drive, but it also lets you fold the fins flat up against the boat in shallow water. And even if you forget, they've built a kick up feature into the latest version of this drive. I really cannot say enough good things about this product or about Hobie products in general, but what makes this different than the standard fishing kayaks that you normally see this on is that I'm putting it in a much lighter and much faster watercraft. That doesn't necessarily make it better, it just means that it's a different type of boat for a different use case scenario. Also, I've made the whole thing, including the drive box, removable. That means that if you want to convert this back to a completely normal canoe, you just undo a few screws, you take all this out, you can put a plug in the bottom, and then you've just got a regular canoe. It only weighs a couple pounds more. So, like I said, this is turning out to be a way bigger project than I expected, but I am confident that this thing is going to happen, and I'm going to try to get it finished by the end of this summer. The next step here is I need to build another larger prototype and also film the instructions for actually building this thing. And then we have to draft a plan set. And then tentatively, I think we might be able to release this as a separate mini course instead of just putting it in the normal canoe building course in case you want to try to adapt it to a different boat. Also, I just want to mention that this pedal drive functionality does not interfere with the rowing, the sailing, the catamaran, or the nesting functions of our normal canoe designs. So you can still do all those things. And personally, I cannot wait to have two of these so I can catamaran them side by side with a pair of sails. So if you wanna keep up on the progress for this, the best way to do that is to follow our Instagram feed because I am constantly posting new photos and videos as I'm working through my prototyping process. Once again, that is at Cape Falcon Builds on Instagram. Now, just one final side note before I close this out, another offshoot of the pedal drive prototyping is that I'm revisiting electric motors for canoes. This is something that I explored briefly a few years ago, but we decided not to pursue it because the weight and the complexity of those motors just seemed out of proportion to the simplicity of the pack canoes that I was building at the time. But now that we're fully committed to a pretty good chunk of complexity, the electric motor doesn't seem quite as out of scale to this latest project. So I managed to get my hands on a Bixby kayak motor, and I've been testing that out in a variety of different configurations on the canoe. I don't have much to share with you here on YouTube, but I have been posting a bunch of vertical videos of my testing on it on Instagram. Once again, you can check that out there as well. All right, I think that's it for now. I know this was a huge update, but at least now you know what's up with all of our projects, and hopefully I can actually get a few of them finished this year so we can release some new plans. Now, one final personal request, if you know anyone who works in medicine or you work in medicine and you can think of any plausible theory for why a twisting and shearing motion in the upper thoracic spine could trigger a massive increase in blood pressure six hours later, 
please get in touch with me. I feel like I've got a really good team of doctors right now, but we're still really struggling to try to figure out exactly how this is being triggered physiologically, and there's not a lot of precedent because thoracic injuries are fairly rare. If I can figure this thing out and it's treatable, there's a chance I might actually be able to paddle again. All right, thanks for watching. Hit that like and click the notification bell. And as always, take care, be safe on the water, and have fun building your skin on frame boat. I'll see you next time.